Alright guys, welcome to Precision Machine Shed. It has been a while since I've made a video, but a couple reasons why. Got a new machine. Uh, got a, a machine I've had for a while that I finally got set up. So this machine I've been looking for for quite a while. And it may look similar to the other ones I've had in the past, but this is actually a Clossing model 6913 and it is a 14 by 48 uh, lathe. It's three phase and this is actually not this exact machine, but this is the same model machine that I actually learned how to run a lathe on. And um, so this thing's kind of cool. Uh, there's not a ton of these things around, and if you can find them, they're usually all beat up and worn out. But this one's in pretty decent shape, so I'm, I was pretty stoked when I ran across this thing. What I ended up doing to afford this, because I paid a pretty penny for it, but um, I actually sold off actually sold off a few of my other machines to get this one. Uh, if you remember, I had a South Bend Heavy 10 sitting here not too long ago, got rid of that, got a few of a, rid of a few other things, and uh, here we go, this is what I got. So today I'm just gonna run over a few things about this particular machine, kind of why I like it, and um, uh, I've yet to completely set this thing up yet. I gotta level it and adjust the chuck, ch clutch a little bit yet, but, um, it's a pretty nifty machine. Let's take a look at it. And if you're wondering, this is a three-phase machine. I usually put uh, VFDs on a lot of these things, but I got sick of wiring VFDs into everything, so I just went and got myself a rotary phase converter. Uh, I'll show you that quick, and then we'll look at the lathe. Here's my rotary phase converter setup, and I actually chose to go with the North America Phase Converter Company for a couple reasons. Number one, they have a magnetic switch inside their housing there with they got a with an on off switch on the panel and also they come with a Baldor uh, generator motor so I've heard quite a few of these things from different guys they run them and they're kinda noisy and I know Baldor makes great products so uh, North American phase converters use Baldor motor generators so this is just a temporary setup here because we plan to move here shortly. So if you want to learn how to wire these things up, I am by no means the person to learn how to do it from because I am not a licensed electrician. Uh, but I used to work with my grandfather who was. ran a business for many years, but I got enough to, to get it going here. So this is my main power in, two phase, and I had to run 10 gauge wire back to my panel. So I got a 30 amp breaker and this particular phase converter runs 20 to 30 amp. Those are the minimum maximum requirements needed. So power in two phase, safety switch, service disconnect, um, into the box two phase, and then three phase down to the generator back up to the machine, and then three phase out, and I got a couple plugins. I also have a breaker on the lathe on the back of the lathe. I don't have a breaker on or a cutoff on the my drill press here which I'll show you later but uh, if anybody knows I've got a, a magnetic contact switch I might put on there if I can do that um, between the lathe or the drill press and the phase converter. Uh, that's just a safety thing and an overload thing so anybody has any recommendations on that let me know. Um, otherwise that's my phase setup so I'm cranking on here. So main power, so that powers up the box, and then that powers up the phase converter, and they say it, let it run to two to three seconds to get it all charged up to, to power everything on. So then we're ready to use our lathe here. All right, so like many Clossings, this thing's pretty simple to use. You got your on, off switch, forward, reverse, and then you also have the clutch and the brake lever down here. So what this guy does is this is always down when you turn it on, or you can have it up and turn it on, but um, so this disengages it when it's down. So we turn this thing on. My plates are a little loose in there, so I gotta tighten up my clutch, but and then we engage our clutch, and that engages the spindle. And the cool thing about these bossings is, like I said, I gotta retighten this one up, but when you push down, it disengages the clutch, so it disengages the spindle, and then it's supposed to break it the further down you push, kind of like a boxing Colchester. See, it kind of worked there. 
same thing, forward reverse. Um, gear selectors, this is ABC. And this rotary selector, so you turn this whichever to change your gears. And you got, um, you know, ABCD, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then you also have like a lot of clossings, a slide gear out on the end here that you pull in or out. And that correlates with your change gears. I'm going to shut this off for a second. And then also on the, the 14 inch lathes, which is different than the 12s, you have an engagement lever here. So what this lever does is this engages the gearbox for your lead screw so you can, uh, you know, power, power your apron with cross feed, uh, longitudinal feed or threading. And disengage it if you don't want to run it. Of course, as always, here's the slide gear just on the end. And then the bolt pin on these guys is right out on the end here, the spindle. Here's a bolt pin. So pull that all the way out. And this usually has a cover on it, but I took that off because I had the cover off. And then here's your slide gear that slides in and out. Make sure it's fully engaged or disengaged. It should always be fully engaged. And of course the cool thing about the Clossings, mini Clossings, uh, the variable speed. This is a hydraulically controlled, here's like a master cylinder basically. Uh, only when the motor is running, turn it up, turn it down, varies the speed indefinitely and variable. Indefinitely variable speed. Um, and you got back gear and forward gear. So let's say, let's put this guy in a back gear. <clears throat> Alright, so back gear on these things is pretty simple. Back gear, in. Pull a bowl pin. So it's all the way out. And that's it. Alright, so then we'll crank it on. Turn our phase converter or phase converter on. Just now we're back here. So this thing goes down to about 43, 45 RPMs, give or take. Put it back into direct drive. Pop the bullpen back in. So that's about a thousand RPMs. Not much to it. Now let's take a look at the apron assembly. All right, so on the top end, it's pretty standard stuff. Uh, you got a graduated dial all the way around here. Cross slide compound. And these are nice, they have uh, 200 degree marks on the dials, which makes it nice. I mean, this is pretty standard stuff for a lot of these machines. <clears throat> of course, your carriage and half nut. So down is the power cross feed, and then pull it out and push it up. That's the longitudinal power feed. That's pretty simple. And then of course you have another, a second clutch handle on this side. A lot of times these get a little loose just from wearing, and this one gets used a lot more than the other one. So not much to it. And then of course a threading dial out on the end here. All right, so a couple other neat features on these lathes is they do have flame hardened bedways. So they're usually in pretty, you know, if they haven't been all worn out and beat up, they're usually in pretty decent shape. Um, they have 70 degree V-ways on them. And then also when they cast these, whoever designed this, they have um, these rear facing holes. So when you're turning and cutting, everything goes back to the back of the tray and then there's a bevel on the back of the tray. I have mine up against the wall, but you can, uh, the idea is you can go in the back of this thing and clean all the chips out, but I'm going to go against the wall, so that's that. Tailstock, standard tailstock. It has a camming lock on it instead of a wrench, which I kind of like. Move it back and forth, lock it down. Lock for the quill. It is a number three Morris taper on these guys. 
And the only thing I don't like that I kind of really never noticed before now is they don't have a micrometer graduation on the hand wheel here. They do have a, you know, a sixteenth of an inch on the quill, but, you know, I'll probably end up putting an aluminum collar on here and like a Mighty Mag with a, a dial indicator uh, to get more accurate readings for chambering and stuff like that. And of course with it I got a steady rest and I have a follower rest back there and then the other cool thing I got with it, which I haven't put on there yet, is the ever so coveted, coveted Travadial. So on my particular lathe they have it, it's, it was set up on here. So this mounts right there and it, you can still use the dial, uh, the threading dial, but <clears throat> somebody has this nice machined aluminum bracket uh, that they made once upon a time that uh, when I get a little time here I'll actually put that on there and I'll use that. I've wanted one of these for a while and I think they're cool. A couple other random things with this. I did get a call it draw bar which looks like somebody modified this one at one point in time to extend it to fit through here. I got a three jaw, a four jaw, and then a nice adjustable buck chuck six jaw. So it's an adjust true six jaw with inside and outside jaws on it so I'll probably use this quite a bit for barrel work until I make a jig up. <clears throat> and yeah I got some random stuff and parts with it so I'm pretty pumped about it. Alright so that's kind of an overview of the Clossing 6913. If I didn't mention this is a 6913. They did make several other models of the 6900 series. Uh, I believe it was like a 6903 which is basically the same lathe with a shorter bed on it. Like I said, I'm pretty jacked about this thing. The main reason I bought this lathe was because it works very well for doing barrels. One big downside to this thing is it's an old US made machine. I don't know what year exactly it was made. It has a uh, 602 539 serial number. I'm not sure exactly what year it was made, but going off one of the manuals, I think they had one in the late 60s, so it's just guessing late 60s, early 70s for this machine. Still got a few things to do to set it up. Still got to level it. Still have to adjust the clutch plates. And the everything else on it works great. I don't really have to do much else of anything to it. As for doing barrel work on this thing, it is a very good lathe for doing barrel work, except I cannot do metric threads on it, which is kind of a bummer. But I don't do a lot of metric stuff right now, so... And if I ever pick it up in the future um, I'll just get another lathe <laughs> on top of this one because I, I like these things. So one of the downsides to these machines as far as doing barrel work is running through the headstock and I have to make a spider for this one but you're gonna look at probably around 23 to 24 inches uh, barrel length that you're going to need to be able to run it through the headstock. Most of the barrels I do are usually 26 or longer, so I'm not too worried about it. And you can always do them in the steady rest if you need to as well, which is another technique which a lot of guys don't do anymore, but that still can create a very accurate rifle. Uh, it can actually make bench rest quality, but you have to be very meticulous about it. And there's a, a very small handful of guys that still do it that way, but most guys run through the headstock because that's kind of uh, the going trend of everything so it's probably what I'll be doing most on this thing uh, unless I'm doing a huge uh, barrel you know they got an inch and three eighths bore on them so you can do up to an inch and a quarter barrel through the headstock <clears throat> beyond that you got to go out to a steady rest not a big deal either way oh one thing I didn't mention here it's kind of cool so down here is and this has probably never been moved in a long time but Here's a carriage kickout for the carriage. So when this thing is on, we can slide this over to say we want to want to do a certain go up to a certain spot. We can set this guy here, tighten it down, and when the carriage runs into this thing, it'll kick it out. So this is a, a piece that ends up getting lost on a lot of these machines. I was pretty excited when I it was still on this one although I'm not sure how much I'll use it but it's there in case I ever do need it it's a handy thing to have all right so there we go there's the Clossing 6913 uh, the 6900 series and even the 5900 series and even the 4900 series for that matter are 
all pretty good lathes. The trick when looking for one of these things is finding one that isn't all beat up and worn out. And if you don't know what you're looking for, there's plenty of videos on YouTube to, to go over that stuff. And if you know somebody that uh, is a machinist or knows a lot about machines, you can ask them and they will be of great help when you're looking for a machine like this. Prices on these things vary widely. Like a lot of machines, they go anywhere from, you know, five, six hundred bucks for one that's, you know, maybe somebody you know, wants to get rid of it, they don't know what it is, they just want it out of their life. Um, all the way up to, you know, four, five, six thousand bucks if you got a lot of tooling with it and it's in good, pretty good shape. Uh, they're, they're pretty good quality machines as long as they're maintained and they're not all beat up. Uh, I paid a little on the higher end for this one because it is in very good shape and everything works on it, functions properly the way it's supposed to. Uh, like I said, I gotta uh, adjust the clutch, but that's not a big deal. You can adjust them, they're made to do that. So, overall, a very high quality US made machine. You may ask why I didn't go with like a Precision Matthews or something like that. Uh, the reason being basically my budget. I didn't want to spend the extra. For a machine like this, the one that I wanted would have been another three to four thousand dollars for a, a, a larger machine like this. And I mean, I'm sure there, I hear a lot of good reviews on them. They're good machines, but I mean, I, I like these things. They, the clutch feature is a big one for me, um, and it's just nice to have. I know a lot of the new ones have brakes and stuff on them. All right, enough chatting. So the next thing I have to do is I'm going to level this lathe out. I'm not going to record it. If you want to see that, there's like the metal tips and tricks. There's, I don't know if Randy Richards did one. Um, there's all sorts of guys out here that have done the lathe leveling technique. Um, on YouTube so you can go check those guys out if you want to figure out how to do that it's pretty simple machinist level uh, and you're good to go the other thing I need to do is I have an AXA tool post I have yet to find a BXA if somebody has a set of BXA stuff that they want to trade me I got like seven holders with a, a really nice AXA piston type uh, tool post if anybody wants to trade out there and needs an AXA and has a BXA I'd be willing to trade for a Dorian or an Alaris uh, but until that happens, I'm gonna retrofit my AXA to fit on this machine. So I'm gonna, I got a little disc I'm gonna put under it to raise the height, and then I gotta make a bolt for it. Hopefully, in the future here, I'll be making more videos on this stuff. And I also got a Klossing drill press here that I got going finally. So we'll be going over that. And like, comment, share, and subscribe. Till next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.